In this video, we'll create an integration hub spoke with a couple of actions to demonstrate how to interact with a third-party GraphQL API. We'll also create a service portal widget to use JavaScript to achieve a similar result. As part of this, we'll create a library of queries for our spoke to make creation and management easier in the future. For this example, we'll use a simple GraphQL API to get Star Wars movie information. We'll start by going to Studio and creating a new app for our spoke. We'll give it a name, add an icon, and click Create. For this exercise, we've created a table, the purpose of which is to make it easier for us to create and maintain the queries, as opposed to the payload of a REST step in the Action Designer or embedded in JavaScript. It's not required, it's just a suggestion. The thing that makes this table special is that it's extended from the application file table, or sys metadata. That means that any records in this table become part of the application, like a business rule or client script. Whether we use the app repo, source control, or good old update sets, the data comes along with the rest of the app data. If we hadn't extended the table, we'd be required to export the records in XML from one instance and then import them into another. The record consists of several string fields to hold a name, ID, and description, and an active field, along with a place for us to create and maintain the query string, the purpose of this whole record, and some variables to assist in testing. Let's create a quick sample record just to make sure things are working properly. We'll name it get all films, ID get dash all dash films, a description, and the GraphQL query, and then submit. Now let's go to Flow Designer and create a new action. We'll call this Get All Films. The query has no inputs, so we'll start with a script that can retrieve the query from our table. The script will read the record based on the ID we sent, which is much easier than trying to decipher a sys ID and return the query string. If we encounter a provider that doesn't allow for new lines and tabs, we can use the JavaScript replace method here to strip them out. This might be a good time to start thinking about putting common logic like this in a script include so multiple actions can use it consistently. We'll go down here to the outputs to have the script return a query string. A quick save, and we'll add another step for the JSON builder. We'll use the name query and use the output of the script step. Now let's add the rest step to send this. We'll define the connection inline and provide the base URL. Yes, we could use the connection alias, which would be much more useful if we were to create several more actions in this spoke. But for this demo, we're gonna do this the brute force way. We'll build the request manually and be sure to change the method to post since all GraphQL requests are post as they include a payload for our query and mutation. We'll also set the header content type to tell the server to expect JSON information. The request body is the output of the JSON builder. We save and test. When we look at the execution details and go down to the steps, we can see from the response body, we got a payload back. Let's copy that and go back to our action and add a JSON parse step to process the response into an object right after the rest step. We'll set the source data to be the response body from the rest step and paste our sample payload here. Then click Generate Target. A quick inspection of the target structure and we'll create an action output. We'll call it films as of type object. Exit edit mode and drag the all films data pill from here. Save and test one more time. When we look at the action output, we can see the films listed here, which are easily consumed by Flow Designer. Now let's create a query that requires inputs to see how variables work. For this example, we'll use the same GraphQL API, only this time we'll send a query to get a specific film, so we need to specify which episode number is a variable. We'll go to our query table and give it a name, 
ID, description, and query, and a sample variable in JSON here. Let's go back to Flow Designer, and to save time, we'll open our previous Get All Films action and use this menu on the right to select Copy Action. Give it a new name and click Copy. First, we'll need to add an action input to get the film ID, which will make an integer and mandatory. Next, we'll update the script in a couple of ways. First, we'll need to add an input to gain access to the film ID in the action input. Next, we'll change the query ID to get-film. We'll create an object to store the variables and use the value from the script step input. And store a stringified version of the variables in a step output. And of course, we'll need to add an output for those variables. And save. Next, we'll add the variables to the JSON builder. The nice thing is that nothing needs to be changed in the rest step because it's using the payload from the JSON builder. Same endpoint. Let's save and test so we get a sample response payload back. In the execution details, we get an error on the JSON parser, which isn't surprising because it's expecting the old response body. So let's go to the new one down here. Copy it and go back to our JSON parser step. We'll paste the new sample on the left and click Generate Target again. Confirm it and take a look. That's what we expected based on the query sent. The only thing left to do is update the action output. So we go to the outputs, edit outputs, and delete the films. Create a new output called film as an object and exit edit mode. We'll then drill into the JSON parser data and get the film object and drag it to the value and save. One more test and we see in the execution details the action output is the film detail we requested. All that's left to do is publish these two actions and make them ready for use by others in Flow Designer. Now let's take a quick look at how these same query records might be used in a service portal widget. Here we have a widget that takes an integer and the goal is to display a few details about that particular Star Wars film. We can see that the server code is setting up a dummy data object for the film data and reading the queries for later use. The HTML is set up with a button to call c.getfilm. So let's start by creating that function. Through the magic of editing, we have the script here, so let's walk through it together. First, we'll create a simple object for the variables. Next, we'll add those to an object that contains both the query string and stringified variables. Remember, the variables need to be stringified because they'll contain quotes for the JSON objects within. Next, we'll make an HTTP POST call to the GraphQL API endpoint. If the response was successful, we'll process that. Noting that even when a GraphQL error appears, most APIs send back a 200 to indicate success, so we'll go through the response body to check for an error property and display it. If none was found, we can process the response body for valid data and display that. Otherwise, if the server returned a 400 or 500 response code, we'll catch that also. Now let's try out the widget. We ask for the first film and see Episode 4, A New Hope. If we change that to 3, we get Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. The same concepts with queries and variables can apply to UI Builder, outbound REST messages, or third-party applications using custom ServiceNow GraphQL APIs. This should get you started on your way to understanding GraphQL and how to use the basics. There are more details about GraphQL, and I invite you to watch the final video in this series for some helpful resources.